Welcome to Everything Guitar Episode 6. I am Ben France, your host and master of ceremonies for this weekly deep dive into the world of the guitar. Uh, if you haven't watched Everything Guitar before, this is a weekly series with new episodes premiering at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is GMT minus 5 p.m. every Wednesday afternoon. On Everything Guitar, we take a, like I said, deep dive into the world of the guitar. Content you could expect to see, maybe things including weekly miniature guitar lessons, some news regarding new products product releases and new music releases. You can also potentially see some features on specific players or specific instruments. So if you find everything guitar to be helpful, fun, funny, entertaining, or any of those, or additional adjectives that you might find appropriate, feel free to click the subscribe button down below and maybe ring the bell for notifications. Also, if you find this particular video to be useful, feel free to give me a thumbs up as well. So let's go ahead and dive into episode six now. Starting out this week on the news, I wanted to feature a new release by a, a jazz guitar player by the name of Nier or Nier Felder. I apologize, I'm not quite sure. I'm probably horribly mispronouncing his name. Uh, Nier is a uh, artist who was heralded way back in 2010 as the best new guitarist in an NPR poll, which is also kind of seen as the kiss of death, unfortunately, where a lot of times best new artists uh, through NPR end up being artists that kind of disappear. In this case, though, he released his first solo album somewhere around 2013, early 2014. Then there was a six-year gap before his new album, Two, was released. This was just released on July 9th of this year. Anir is a very jazz bass player, but he does experiment with a variety of other instrumentation and styles. On his album on two, you'll hear instrumentation such as banjo, theremin, guitar, some samples, some looping, just a variety of different things, but it's very based in the jazz guitar world. So let's take a look at some of Nier's socials and then listen to a couple snippets. This is his homepage, nierfelder.com. You'll see here, and you see, obviously, it says the new album is out now. It's got links to Apple Music, to Spotify, to Tidal, and to Bandcamp. And then you see there's a full site and merch coming soon. There's a link to join the mailing list. If you like his music, I would highly recommend you do that. And then there is a Fire in August link as well. So we're going to click on that link. And that actually will bring up a link to his video, which is also on YouTube. I'll put the comment down below for the song Fire in August. So let's listen to just a little bit of that now. So that is Fire in August. Notice that's kind of an interesting juxtaposition of some very rock sounding kind of guitar chords in the background, but with some very obvious jazz instrumentation as far as the melody and the lead line going above. I'll put a link to that YouTube video down in the description of this video so you can check that guy out. Uh, let's also take a listen to another song off of his album. This is a song, uh, and I may be mispronouncing this horribly, I believe it's called Interregnum. And we'll listen to just a little bit of a snippet of this song, which is a very, very cool, very jazz sounding song. Thank you. 
that was a little bit of Interregnum off of Near Felder's new album, too. Like I mentioned, I'll put the link to his uh, Bandcamp page, or actually to his homepage, nearfelder.com. I'll also put the link to his Bandcamp page where you can purchase copies of his album, whether it's a download or it is physical media. And also link to that video to Fire and August on YouTube as well. I Like I've mentioned before, without going too in deep, I would just highly recommend that if you're interested in uh, the music, purchase some physical music or purchase music from the artist. While Spotify and streaming platforms are a wonderful thing, artists make little to no money off of that. So if you want to continue to listen to music like this that you enjoy, I'd highly recommend purchasing some physical merch, whether it's uh, T-shirts, uh, physical copies of albums, whatever the case may be. So enough of that. Let's jump over now to the uh, product release for this week. Let me pull it up on this screen here. All right, and this week I've actually pulled up some information that was from Guitar.com. The Black Star just announced uh, a 6L6 equipped version of their HT Club 40 Mark II amplifier. Black Star amplification, if you're not familiar with them, they are a uh, company based out of the UK that makes some good amps that have been kind of seen as being kind of uh, similar to the M word, we'll say it, Marshall amplification. Uh, with kind of their own spin on them. They've been around for quite some time now, and they make some very high-quality amps. This guy, though, the new one, is a 6L6 version, meaning that the power tubes are different. Instead of being the usual EL34s, which are kind of what you typically see with a Marshall-style amplifier, 6L6s are typically more of a Fender or a Mesa Boogie type of thing. So let's jump over to the Black Star page, and let's take a look at some of the information that they give you on this amp. It tells you here the 606 power valve has characteristic glassy clean tones, crunchy overdrive, and smooth mid-range, making these power valves the perfect match for the dynamic HT Club 40 Mark II. It sees the award-winning 40-watt combo powered by a pair of 606 valves driving two 12-inch Celestian 7080 speakers, so that's actually a 212 combo amp. Equipped with two channels and four foot-switchable voices, it's an ideal gigging valve amp for club-sized venues. And now this amp's been taken in a different tone direction with the two 6L6 valves powering the dynamic clean and crunch tones. There is a 10% power reduction to create an ideal club performance, home practice, and studio recording amplifier in one amazing combo. So, it shows you a little bit more about it here. Links to the 6L6, tells you the different voicings of what they do. Clean voice one and two, overdrive voice one and two as well. And then gives you some information on them as far as what that guy looks like. It is an open back or a partially closed back combo. And the one thing I apologize, I did not actually look up, was the cost of this guy. So let's take a look at that real quick. So here we go. Sweetwater's got it listed at $799.99 US dollars MSR. It is the sale price. MSRP $1,079.99. So pretty competitively priced, about an $800 212 combo amp. Uh, what I've learned from experience with the 212 combo amp, why this is considered a gigging or a club amp, it's not going to be lightweight. I had a Mesa uh, Mesa Boogie amp that was a 212 combo, and that sucker was heavy. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking about picking up this guy. Make sure you read the specs and the uh, weight of this guy. Let's see if it's listed in the specifications. 53 pounds, so fairly decent weight for a... 212 combo amp. So there you go, the Black Star HT40, uh, HT Club 40 Mark II with 6L6 power tubes, and is a 112 combo. Pardon me, Black Star had it listed as a 212 combo, but it is a 112 combo. This week on the Mini Guitar Lesson, I thought we'd start diving into the modes of the major scale. We previously learned the major scale the minor scale, and a couple of variations of the minor scale, the harmonic minor and the melodic minor. Now, you may have heard the term modes before, but may not be real familiar with exactly what that means, so I thought we'd start an exploration into that today. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up some information here on the screen that will help visually. If you're like me, you're a visual learner, so this will probably help. I'm going to pull up some information. This is a blog post off of the Seymour Duncan website where they talk about modes. So, Let's flip over to that view now, and let's talk a little, a little bit about this. So let's take a look here. It says, let's start with the first mode, of course. That is right, C major or C Ionian. So the C major scale is the same thing as C Ionian, or the first mode of the major scale. So let's jump back over to the guitar, and let's learn this guy, or show this guy again, C major, which is this. <laughs> Okay, 
and our steps there, if we jump back over onto the screen, we'll look and we'll see that that is a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So that's our formula for the major scale. Also, if we look here on the screen, it talks about the chords harmonizing the C major scale, making triads, we get some pretty cool chords. So our basic C major scale, the chords that go into that are C, which should also be C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished. Now, so then, jumping down to how we change this to D Dorian. First off, look here how the chart changes. We're starting with the note D. We are, in effect, doing the same pattern that we were doing. Or we are starting with the same pattern that we were in the major scale, only we're starting on the second note. So instead of having C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, with whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, we are starting on that second one, on that D, and then we're just continuing our pattern. So we have D, a whole step to E, a half step to F, a whole step to G, a whole step to A, a whole step to B, a half step to C, and then a whole step back to D to octave that guy out. So with the chords, they do change as well. Since D is our root chord, then the chord order changes, and we have these chords in this order. For D Dorian, it would be D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, B diminished, and then C. Like it says here, same chords, right? Yes, in a different order, however. And so based off the different order, it's going to sound very different. And like they say here, if you have a bass player handy, have him play the low D note on every single chord. This reinforces the idea that the notes you're using come from the C scale, but use D as the tonic note. Since all of the chords only exist in the key of C, yet you are hearing D as the tonic chord, it sounds quite different than our example in C major. So let's listen to a little bit of his C Ionian or C major scale, and then let's listen to a little bit of the one in D Ionian, and then we'll listen and you'll kind of watch me play through something in uh, D Dorian as well that I pre-recorded in Logic Pro. So here we go with the C Ionian. <laughs> There you go, that was C Ionian or C major. So now let's jump down and let's listen to his example with a D Dorian solo. Remember, this is the exact same notes and these are also the exact same chords, only in a different order when a different one is a tonic. So it puts an emphasis in different points within the chords and notes. So here's D Dorian. First thing, if you're like me, that you may notice, you may think when you hear D. Dorian is Carlos Santana. And yeah, Santana plays a lot of stuff in the Dorian mode as well. So that sounds very similar to that Santana type of vibe. So now let's take a little bit of a visual example and listen, and let's check out something here that I've done in Logic Pro, just as an example for us. We'll listen through the chord progression once, and then we will from there, uh, I'll do just a little bit of improvising and D Dorian as well over that. And once again, remember our tonic note is the D, which is this guy, our root in D Dorian. And that our difference is our sixth is the B instead of an A sharp or B flat. So that D Dorian scale looks like this, or D Dorian mode. And it's that sixth note So let's listen through the chord progression once, and then we will improvise a little bit over that in D Dorian.
Okay, so now let's improvise a little bit in D Dorian over that. The, the chords we're listening to are D minor, G, F, E minor, and then the second go round we're at D minor. C, E minor, A minor, and then back to our D minor. All right, so let's improvise just a little bit in D Dorian over this chord progression. So there you go. There's just a little bit of an example of D Dorian. So that is it for this week's mini lesson. Next week, we'll dive into some additional information regarding the next mode in the major scale. Me and my don't break no streets. with metallic This week on Me and My Guitar, I thought I would feature the newest instrument in my stable, my Ibanez GSR-206 six-string electric bass. Uh, the G in that does stand for GO, which is the entry level or the least expensive series of instruments that Ibanez sells. And this is an Indonesian-made bass that was made in April of 2019. The serial number shows it is serial number 13,947 of the instrument made in that factory in April of 2019. It is a six string bass. I initially wanted a five string. I'd mentioned on a couple episodes previously that I was looking for something more than a four string bass because I'm starting to write more progressive music and I wanted something that I can get lower with. It's really hard to have a bass line following a guitar and drop C, B, or drop A when you only have a four string bass guitar. So, was looking for a five, ran across a really good deal on this guy and decided to go ahead and pick him up. Uh, let's jump over to the screen and I'll show you uh, some information off Ibanez's website. You see here, this is the GSR-205B bass guitar in walnut flat finish. This guitar has a maple neck with a Nyota body, which is kind of a, uh, a Asian version of a walnut body. It has a Jatoba fretboard, which is once again like an Asian version of Rosewood, since real Rosewood's getting very hard to find shows that it has medium frets on it, strings bracing is 16 and a half millimeter. It has pack passive pickups. It does have the fat two EQ, and it shows that it is a 34 inch scale length with a 305 millimeter fretboard radius. Also shows how the controls work on this guy. So we actually have a bridge volume, a neck volume, a fat EQ, which I'll show what that does, and a tone control as well. And it shows you kind of what the fat EQ does when that's turned up. It kind of boosts the low end, it dips around about a thousand hertz, and then it boosts a little bit higher as well, kind of the upper mid-range to lower high end. So let's take a listen to this guy. Oh, and this does retail for about $299, so that's the street price you can get it from Guitar Center or a number of places like that uh, when you buy it new. So let's take a listen here and kind of give you all an idea of what it sounds like. I am using the uh, Neural DSP Dark Glass Ultra plug-in here. So let's take a listen to it with the uh, 
Fat Boost EQ turned off, and we're gonna start out with just the neck pickup. Sounds similar to this, or sounds like this. Growl there. A lot of that's coming from the uh, Dark Glass Ultra plugin that you'll see on the screen. I'm using the uh, Nolly Get Good preset as well. Now let's jump to the bridge pickup. Sounds like this. Let's take a listen with both pickups engaged. Kind of dips the mid range out a little bit. Now let's check out the fat EQ. This thing's really freaking cool, I think. So here's our sound on just the bridge pickup by itself. And as we bring in the fat EQ, you'll hear it really starts to overdrive and push that bottom end. So then we get a really, really crunchy. So yeah, that is a super useful thing. Let's listen to that fatty cue on the neck as well. And finally, let's disengage the distortion on the uh, Dark Glass Ultra, so we clean up the sound a little bit. You can really hear where the fat EQ does its thing here. So here's both pickups, no fat EQ, just by themselves. And with the fat EQ engaged with both pickups. So there we go, my Ibanez uh, SRG or GSR206B Walnut Flat Bass Guitar. Love this guy. I'm really, really excited to start writing some music with this lower ability to, or with the ability to tune lower like this. So hope you all enjoy it. I think it's pretty cool bass. All right, that wraps us up episode six of Everything Guitar. Hopefully you found this video to be fun, funny, entertaining, educational useful, or any number of other adjectives. If so, once again, I would love for you to uh, click the subscribe button down below. I do have these videos coming out, like I said previously, every week at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesdays. And you can also ring the bell for notifications because there are a number of other videos that get released periodically, not on that straight weekly schedule. Uh, additionally, I do offer guitar lessons online during the time of COVID-19. So if you are interested in something like that, wanting to further your knowledge and your ability on the guitar, or just wanting to get started playing this wonderful instrument, feel free to reach out to me directly. You can always comment on the video, or you can send me an email to benjaminfrancemusic at gmail.com. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, uh, thank you for stopping by, for checking out the video. I appreciate each and every one of you very much, and I hope you all have a great week going forward. Take care, everyone. Bye.